bring us onto your journey. We want to help you learn how to make the most of the platform and help us improve your experience. As a reminder, we will be here same time tomorrow for office hours. If we have any questions we don't get to today, we will start with those tomorrow. So today is a module on migrating existing data to Cockroach TV with John St. John and those tomorrow, Alistair Perry. So today is if a you module have been on migrating up, existing data to Cockroach oh, TV. Am I getting a little echo? John St. John we'll and those tomorrow, Alistair Perry. So today is a module been on migrating up, are all existing that? data to Cockroach mm -hmm. Am I getting a little technical difficulties <laughs> which which always happens might not be the only ones give Lori just a minute all right i think Maybe technical difficulties i think we got rid of that <laughs> oh, I, st I still hear it which always happens oh you do might not be the only mm -hmm. ones. okay Lori, just a minute all right i all think right. technical difficulties i think we got rid of that <laughs> See Lori putting in her headphones. <laughs> we'll get there. All right, I'm. I put in some headphones. I'm still hearing it a little, but let's. Okay. See. Sounds sounds good now, Lori. Okay. Okay. All right. I think, I think we're good now. So sorry about that, everyone. All right. So today is a module on migrating existing data to Cockroach DB with John St. John and Alistair Perry. If you have been keeping up with us, you may have seen them do a workshop together last month. They're a great duo. So I'd like to go ahead and introduce John St. John, who is an enterprise architecture. So tell me about a time where you had a data migration fail, John. Yeah, so I was I was kind of chuckling to myself uh, uh, before the show started because I, I'm trying to think of a time that a, a data migration uh, didn't fail in some way. So um, I don't think I have a specific uh, example. Alistair said he has a pretty good one, but uh, I would say typically um, when you're migrating data from one database to another, um, it can be pretty challenging and uh, we'll show you, you know, I intentionally you'll see in the workshop today, I, I tried not to choose uh, too happy of a path. Um, I wanted to choose a little bit of a sad path for migration just to kind of highlight some of the areas that can be, can be tricky. Um, so looking forward to it. Nice, I'm excited. And I would also like to introduce Alistair Perry, who is also an enterprise architect. So tell me about the last time you had a data migration fail. Uh, it was a number of years ago now, and this was actually Oracle to Oracle. So um, it, it wasn't even between different uh, technologies. We were moving from one version of a billing system to a, a newer version and uh, a newer version of Oracle as well. Um, and the customer had said, we must have zero downtime. We really can't have any downtime. So we used Oracle Golden Gate that's a very complex uh, product to get used to. We had a Golden Gate expert helping us, um, but we got very close to migration. And the, the thing that really went wrong towards the end was we couldn't absolutely guarantee the integrity of what we got in the final solution was what we got in the source database. And they weren't happy that they, they knew they had everything. So we went back to a much more traditional uh, migration, which did take some outage, not a, not a huge amount. We copied some static data over beforehand, but we got to a point where the customer was happy. They were prepared to take that outage rather than never quite be sure if they'd, they'd got the right integrity. Wow. <laughs> and for everyone, I am Lori Moreta. I am a project manager here at Cockroach Labs. And I am really looking forward to today. So without further ado, John, take it away. All righty. Um, thanks, everyone, for joining. Um, I think I've been doing a lot of the live stream, 
uh, being a part of a lot of the live streams uh, that we've been doing as part of this program. I think this is the first one that I've presented. So um, I sat in with Alistair's, uh, it went super well. Um, so I'm looking forward to, to giving this and, and embracing any, any hiccups that come, come along the way. Um, so the topic that I'm talking about today is migrating existing data to CockroachDB serverless. And in particular, I'm going to be sticking with the uh, what we call the free tier, which is uh, basically a, a zero dollar spending limit that you can set on your on your cluster. That means you know essentially it's free, free forever. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna choose a couple of things. One is um, I'm gonna it's I'm gonna go with a, kind of a simple version of migration. There's a lot of knobs. Uh, that you can use different formats you can use, but I'm going to go with um, kind of a, take you through the process so you understand what the steps are in doing a migration, um, and then we'll we'll hopefully add a little bit of color um, throughout and maybe at the end about some of the options that you have available. So first of all, I'm going to give you a maybe 90 second, uh, maybe more more marketing type blurb, and then I'm going to not do anything like that, but uh, because I feel like I, I kind of have to. It's it's why why choose CockroachDB serverless. So, uh, I'm hope, I'm, yes. Go Sorry, no rep. Do you want to go ahead and share your screen? Um, yeah, actually, I will bring up the screen in just a minute. Um, okay. So yeah, uh, after maybe after the ninety second blurb, and then we'll start kind of digging in. Um, so I. Uh, so we've been, I'm guessing probably the folks that are on the live stream, maybe you've joined another live stream, you've read a little bit about CockroachDB. And uh, we've been working on this for, I think almost seven years now. Um, it's a distributed database system and CockroachDB serverless is, uh, gives you the power of this amazing distributed uh, database system in a really simple and easy to use deployment. So uh, it ha is able to um, kind of our three Principles are scaling fast, surviving anything, and thriving everywhere. And uh, it's really built on the same. Uh, it is the same technology as as CockroachDB that we've been working on for a long time. Um, and so it really simplifies. Uh, you know, Alistair, you talked about um, kind of migration for upgrade. Uh, it sim simplifies a lot of operations, including upgrade, scaling, maintenance, uh, and we also provide a. Uh, PostgreSQL uh, wire compatible interface for it, which means that not that we can support all Postgres features, but that if you're using uh, an existing Postgres uh, driver or ORM that you can uh, leverage those. And then also um, one of the really cool things, and when we talk about serverless and some of the benefits of serverless is that you can pay only for what you use. And so I mentioned that you can get a free cluster and play around with it really easily. Um, and, and typically it only takes a few seconds to uh, spin up a cluster with no credit card required um, and you get free storage and, and usage. Um, so that's kind of the end of the marketing blurb. And uh, then we can, we'll jump in on the, so let me pull up my screen. Give me a second. Cool. All right. So what, uh, a little bit as we, we dive into this, uh, I just wanted to talk about the motivation for this uh, project. So I'm, I'm maybe a little bit of a, a newer comer to Cockroach Labs. Uh, I've been here about four months. And when I first started, uh, I really wanted to get a better sense of uh, CockroachDB and at the time we had a cloud offering. And so for me as a, as a developer interested in trying it out, um, it was great I, going through the various tutorials that have some simple uh, test databases, um, but I really wanted to take something that I, I knew and had worked on for a while and uh, migrate that into Cockroach and get a chance to see how Cockroach performs with that. So I think that is probably a, a case uh, that, that folks that are are looking to try out Cockroach DB serverless. So the other thing is um, I mentioned that I tried out some, some little tutorials that had some 
clean, clean databases doing import, but I wanted to take a something that was a little bit messier, um, not quite so clean, and maybe a little closer to a real use case, uh, and then uh, try to migrate that. Um, well, things got pretty busy. Uh, as enterprise architects, we work with a lot of customers, and I didn't really get a chance to go through that full process. So as I was um, putting together this workshop, I thought, hey, this would be kind of a cool opportunity to put that together. So I, I have a side project that I've been working on for a little while uh, in my spare time, probably about 15 years. And it's, it's not super up to date because I don't really have a lot of spare time, um, busy with work, busy with, with kids, et cetera. So it's a little bit of a, a bit of a crufty database. Um, but the application is for uh, this website that I put together called climbingweather.com, which shows a weather forecast for climbing areas throughout the United States. So uh, I'm a rock climber. And uh, if you pull up, for example, Joshua Tree National Park, it'll give you the point forecast um, based on data from the National Weather Service for Joshua Tree. And you can uh, favorite areas and pull together a list of areas that you're interested in. And you can look back at historical data, um, also look at averages. So you can plan trips and those type of things. So I thought, oh, OK, that's a kind of a cool database to use. Um, uh, for, this, for this workshop, I really wanted to work in Postgres because uh, we support importing from a lot of different formats. But a lot of folks are using Postgres for Postgres wire compatible. Um, so unfortunately, the database was in MySQL, but I went ahead and converted it over to Postgres for this demo. And you'll have access to the, the dump uh, if you want to kind of play around with it on your own. So I really pulled out 11 key tables, and I'll just run through these really quickly. Um, there's a table that has climbing areas in the United States that has like unique ID, latitude, and longitude, name, what state it's in, those type of things. And then the forecasts live in the daily and hourly databases. Um, or, sorry, our, uh, daily and hourly tables. And then there's uh, we have some information about state and country. Even though right now it's United States centric, um, there are some uh, ways that uh, the database leverages uh, countries. We have a system setting, uh, what we call a CLIMB 81 station, which is essentially a, a weather sensing station that we use to pull monthly averages. Uh, there's an archive. There's a, a table with um, basically every zip code uh, in the United States. And because we did some indexing around zip code distances, um, those zip codes have latitude and longitude. So we have an area zip code distance. And um, US zip codes are like a, a five digit, I think to nine digit uh, number. And uh, people can put in their zip code and then just see all the areas that are kind of nearby to them. So that's um, kind of the bare minimum for running uh, climbingweather.com, uh, the website, but also there's an API that powers uh, a couple mobile apps and also a newer version of the site that's uh, gonna be a little bit more modern. Um, so I thought those were kind of the bare minimum. All right, so that's kind of the background. And um, what I wanna walk you through next is uh, spinning up a, a new Cockroach DB serverless cluster. Um, so I think I got like a little bit ahead of myself. Um, maybe before we jump into that, I'll just want to give you um, kind of a, a little bit of an outline of, of roughly like five steps that we're going to uh, do for doing this import. So first is we need a cluster, of course. We're going to spin up a new Cockroach DB serverless cluster. Um, then we need to set up a database, create a database on the cluster uh, for uh, migration along with the user that we're going to use for the migration. Uh, then we need a, a dump of the Postgres database. And we won't actually dump it, but I have a, a dump in the data directory of the repository. So that's using the pg dump command. And then we're going to run the database import from the pg dump into the, the, the cluster. Um, so not a ton of steps there, but this will be probably what you would want to do um, if you're trying out Cockroach DB serverless with an existing database. All right. Um, so the first thing that we do is open up the uh, Cockroach Cloud Cockroach uh, Cloud uh, website, and what you would typically do is um, 
sign in to create a new account, uh, or I'm sorry, create a new account. You can use your GitHub login through like a OAuth OpenID Connect style sign in, or you can just create an account with your email address. Um, and once you do that, you'll uh, go into this, uh, this dashboard for your clusters. So I already have four clusters created. Um, and I'm gonna create a, a new cluster. Um, I created a couple ones uh, prefixed with CW, just in case we have any issues. Um, I have a little data preloaded, but I wanted to do this from a, a brand new cluster. Um, so if you click on uh, create cluster in the corner, uh, then you'll see these options for serverless and, and dedicated. Um, so technically serverless is still uh, in beta, um, but I, you know, it really allows you to, to try out the full functionality um, of the product. And then we also have a dedicated offering that um, creates a kind of total, totally isolated single tenant type deployment. Um, and in that case, you pay um, kind of more on a VP uh, CPU basis. So we're gonna do serverless beta, um, the serverless uh, product, and uh, it's free forever. Uh, it gives you uh, 250 million request units, which are uh, basically a, a measure of the activity on your cluster, as well as five gigabit, uh, gigabytes of um, storage for free. So first thing we want to do is select a cloud provider. So I'm, we might not get to it in this workshop, but I, I did set up, um, so I am running um, climbing weather in, in GCP. And I also set up a, um, I've been playing a little bit with Google Cloud Run. So I did set up a, a new API, REST API endpoint with Google Cloud Run that's connected to both the Postgres instance and Cockroach to show you how easy it is to switch between. Um, we'll see if we get there, but for now I'm just gonna select uh, Google Cloud as a provider, um, and I'm in US Central One, so that works out well. Um, and we can see the spend limit here. So by default, um, uh, we have a zero dollar spend limit. And for this demo, I really wanted to do it with 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 a zero dollar spend limit, so you can see how you can use it. And then down below, you'll see that there's a cluster name that's automatically generated. And I'm going to create my own, and I'll just call it CW Migrate um, for now. Click the Create Cluster button, and typically it takes about five to ten seconds. You'll see there it popped up really quickly. Um, so that's looking good. I'm going to switch back just to the kind of workshop overview, just so you, if you're following along with GitHub, the GitHub uh, repository, you can kind of see where we're at, but um, the next section really is about uh, your connection info. And I just want to make sure that uh, this is really clear to anybody that's getting started for the first time that there's a couple steps that um, you need to do connected. And this screen is super useful. Um, you can access it later by clicking the connect button. But uh, as, I, as we, I mentioned earlier, the Cockroach DB is Postgres wire compliant. So technically you can use a bunch of different database clients to be able to connect, but we do offer a Cockroach specific client that we'll be using for this workshop. Um, they, in this first step that you can, you can download that client um, and that will give you access to do things like upload files to um, cluster file storage. Uh, and it's, it's a nice command line type client. The second that sometimes trips people up is that um, they need to download the CA certificate and the CA certificate is used to kind of establish the uh, security with the TLS security with the, the cluster. Um, so you'll want to run that. Um, I already have these first two steps completed. Um, and in fact, uh, the CA certificate um, is the same between each of my clusters. So I don't need to re-download that. And then the final step is the uh, string to connect to the database. And um, it's really important to know that Cockroach generates a password for you automatically. So uh, we, uh, it's only shown once and you can change it later, uh, but you can't retrieve it. So you saw my password, it got recorded. This is a throwaway cluster. It might flash on the screen, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and copy this whole connection string. 
And I am going to drop it in my little notepad for now. Um, what I like to do is I have my password manager set up. So I have an entry for each cluster and I um, have the different users um, uh, stored there. So however you like to do it, but make sure that these three steps are really important. And um, there's also a few other tabs here that um, provide you different connection strings and connection parameters um, that you can use um, for different drivers and, and different usages. Cool. So we have a cluster um, for CW Migrate, and that's the one that we're going to be using. So the next thing that we want to do is set up a database for uh, and a user for migration. So uh, I am going to now switch over to the terminal and hopefully it's uh, large enough for folks to see. So I basically took that connection string and uh, dropped it into uh, my terminal and connected uh, to the cluster. So the user that it creates the first time is an admin user. So it's got a lot of privileges. Um, I wanted to create a migration, I wanted to create a database and a migration user that has kind of the minimal amount of privileges required to do the migration. So the, the first thing I'm gonna do is do create database. I'm gonna call it CW abbreviation for climbing weather. And that was the step here. And then I'm gonna create this migrate user. Create user migrate with login password migrate one, two, three, four. Just keep it simple for the demo. And then I can uh, just take a look at the users just to see that that's created. And we can see we have the John admin user and the migrate non-admin user. And then move this up just a little bit so I can see it better. Yeah, because when you create users on the admin console, the uh, Cockroach Cloud console, they're all admin users, aren't they? So if you want to create a, exactly. a non-privileged user, you need to do it through SQL commands. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. And, and there's other, you know, there's, there's other considerations that you want. I mean, I think typically, I mean, Alistair, I mean, myself, I would usually create a user for migration specifically for that with the privileges it needs. And then after the migration, I can clean up and maybe have a separate user for maybe the, the application that's accessing it. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. That's good practice. Yes. Cool. Um, so in this case, I granted um, all to the database uh, climbing weather to the migrate user. And then one little, uh, one little issue that I, I found when I was going through this that um, we could mitigate in a couple ways is that when we are uploading to cluster file storage for the first time, we actually need to create a new uh, cockroach creates a new table to be able to store entries for file storage. So you have a couple options here. You can grant create to the migrate user, which is what I did, or you can set that up with maybe the admin user, or maybe that's the user that's actually uploading files. Um, kind of have, have either option, but it's just something that I noticed and ran into. So I just added the extra grant for now. Um, it was probably the simplest approach. Um, and then uh, just looking at, at the grants, um, I can show grants on the database uh, for CW. And then finally the, the backslash Q exits me out of the, um, the session. So let's see. So next, I just want to uh, verify that I can connect with that newly created user to make sure I didn't do something wrong. So I'm going to, I'm in the other window, you'll see it when I cop, uh, paste it back in, but I'm going to just go in and make a couple minor changes to that connection string that I initially downloaded. So I'm going to change, you're not seeing this, but I'll show it to you in a moment. You'll go ahead and change the username and password. Let's put it up there. So I've got, I changed the username to migrate, the password to migrate1234. And I also changed um, kind of small, but at the end, I, I changed the default database from default DB to CW. 
um, to make it so that it connects automatically um, to CW. So we can see here that we're now in the CW database. I don't really have any tables there or anything. I'm connected as the migrate user and I'm gonna go ahead and exit out. So when I was um, somewhat uh, cumbersomely running through this uh, with, with Alistair and Lori, uh, what, I don't know, a few days ago, I, I was uh, use, uh, adding the URL parameter to every single command, which is, is very, very cumbersome. And uh, Alistair saved me by doing something that is, is quite obvious, um, but is, is really nice is to set an environment variable for cockroach URL. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm on, a, I'm on a Mac, and so it might be different if you're on Windows. I think Alistair, you're a Windows user. Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. It's, it's a little bit fiddly in PowerShell, setting environment variable, it's the same thing, yeah. Do you do an export or is it like a set statement or something like that? Uh, I think you do n variable and week or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And colon, yeah. So what this is going to do, so uh, cockroach URL is like a special environment variable that um, uh, the cockroach client recognizes to know how to connect without including the. So in this case, you can see I've got my migrate. I'm going to do everything pretty much as this migrate user. So I don't want to have to keep putting in the URL. So I'm going to export that. And if I, I, like, I can echo it just to make sure it's set properly, I can see that it outputs it. And then the other thing I can do is just check, okay, if I wanna use that uh, cockroach to connect, um, I can just do cock cockroach uh, SQL now or SQL now and it'll automatically connect. So this is just kind of a setup for us to really make it a lot easier as we start working through the rest of the, the workshop. And that's all outlined uh, in GitHub. Um, so awesome. So we've got, we've completed the step. We've created a database, we've created this migrate user. We've logged in, we've configured the cockroach client so that it works great. The next thing is to create a dump of the Postgres database. So I'm not going to do this step because uh, I, I provided the dump um, in the GitHub repository and the data directory. Um, so it already exists, but the information's here. It's quite easy. And if you're, you've used Postgres, you probably use PG dump a ton. There are a lot of options. I just did plain kind of PG dump with the database and then an out file. And then if you are accessing a remote system, you can include the host name, typically you need the username and password, et cetera. Um, so what, what is a PG dump? Um, well, let's see where I am. So I'm in that um, directory for the repository. And if I go into data, migrate user data, um, I have the PG dump in there. And if you look at a PG dump, it's really just a bunch of SQL statements. And uh, you'll see there's uh, some variable set. And then as we get down, I'll just look at one of the big tables. You can see we have create table uh, for area, which I mentioned areas, the climbing areas. You've got area ID, the name, latitude, longitude, et cetera. So that's the thing that we're going to be using. Um, you know, one thing that I, uh, I had a couple of issues initially with sequences during the import, and I think it had to do with um, how I moved things from MySQL to Postgres. But, you know, one thing in Cockroach uh, as a distributed database, typically we um, don't, don't like using um, strictly increasing, uh, like auto incrementing uh, primary keys, just because it can create hotspots in the database. Um, for this demo, I'm not, trying to really optimize the schema yet for Cockroach. I'm really just trying to get the data over. Um, and there's also, we have great resources on schema design and considerations for Cockroach. So um, there are a few things in here, especially in my database, it's like old and it's kind of crusty and all this stuff that, uh, that I just left in there. Cause I, I'm like, hey, you know, this is just kind of a, the goal here is just to try out um, Cockroach DB serverless, not to really kind of redesign the database. So next thing we need to do is figure out, we got the PG dump, how do we get it to the cluster? So there's lots of different ways to do an import, um, but I went for a method that is available 
whether you, um, regardless of what your cluster is, if you have a cluster anywhere, any spending limit, anything, you can use uh, the cluster's local file storage um, that that we provide through Cockroach. And if you are, have a higher spend limit, you've entered a credit card, there's a bunch of other options available that are sometimes preferable. Um, I'll talk about those at the end, but they're like network file storage for like S3 buckets and those type of things. But we're going to use this um, thing. I, I often refer to this local file storage as just user file storage because user file is the cockroach command that lets you access it. So user file, the user file command, you can upload, list, get, delete, just the common operations to, to get um, uh, a file onto your cluster. And it does, uh, I mentioned in the beginning, you have a five gigabyte storage limit, it does count against that, um, but you can delete that, reclaim that once you're done with your import. So the first thing, so remember that I set that environment variable, so I don't have to add the URL um, to the end, and I add it in the, in the, re, in the GitHub repository, I kind of mentioned that in a few places, because I don't want people to jump in and see that, um, uh, uh, don't understand why it's not working, but, um, so there's two things. When I first do the cockroach user file list, I think you see two things. One is a warning. Um, it says the URL specifies a database, but uh, user files, um, user file metadata is always stored in default DB. So um, if you are including a database or a database at the end of your connection string, you will see this warning. It's harmless. Um, and I left it in there because that way I can use that URL environment variable, whether I'm doing user files or connection, connecting directly with um cockroach sql the other is an error though and um i have to be 100 percent honest when i first saw this error i was kind of stumped um because uh it says that it's unable to uh basically that the table doesn't exist for uploading and i thought oh you know i, I didn't do the permissions right or something like that so if you run into this the first time you do use your files don't worry um i mentioned it here um it just for some reason, it's the first time you access user files. If you haven't uploaded anything, it'll give you this error. So let's just ignore it and let's do a cockroach user file upload. And so we're uploading this PG dump. Okay. Get that warning. Um, and then we get this message that it was successfully uploaded. And then we get this whole user file path. So that user file path is is the path you can use. And you'll see that when we run the import statement. Um, but there's actually a shorthand of this that I'll show you in the import, which is if instead of doing like two slashes, you do three, you can you don't have to do the full path. You can just do the file name and we'll see that. So don't worry too much about um, copying that. And hey, John, I wanted to make sure you saw the question from Dev. Um, when using oh. a column like JSON and payload is over 250, is it recommended to save? Um, when using a column like JSON and payload is over 250 megabytes, is it recommended to save? It's a, that's sure a big, I... that's going to be a big column inside of a, a relational database. Uh, I think for any technology, that's quite, quite a big column. We, we can handle it, um, but you're probably better to have something if you've got access to object storage or something like that and just store the reference to it in the column the s3 bucket uh, reference to the object uh, file might be a better way of doing it rather than having 250 megabytes in every row mm -hmm. if that's what you mean that's what the question yeah. means yeah the other thing is um yeah i don't know if it doesn't sound like this refers directly to kind of my data. Um, I think there was an issue that was reported that um, for large files, um, I think uploading or importing large files, there was a like memory budget exceeded uh, error that some folks were seeing. Not sure if that's fixed yet, um, but it's something to watch out for and should be fixed soon. Um, for simplicity, I just used a small uh, dump of under a megabyte. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, sorry, I missed that, Lori. I was kind of, I've got you guys over there in the screen and I'm, I'm not a very good multitasker, so feel free to jump in. Um, oh, but what yeah, you're doing, what you're doing here, John, is you're putting 
you're putting files into a database table effectively with this upload command, aren't you? That's that's what it's doing under the covers. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, ultimately, I'm guessing these lives. Yeah, they live somewhere on disk. Um, whether that, yeah, you know, whether that's directly in the KV store or that underlies cockroach or somewhere else. I actually have no idea, but um, that is something it's, interesting to look at. It's a couple of tables in the default DB. That's why it comes out of your five meg, five gigs. Sorry. Um, oh yeah, it, that, it, it, that and it makes splits sense. the. And what it does in this case is it takes a file and splits it into pieces. And so for there'll be a row in what in the master table for the file, the details of the file, and then there will be a number of chunks of that file so that we're not having massive payloads in each file and each in each that makes row. Sense. It's it's glued together from a, a series of rows in the table. That makes sense. Yeah, because I don't know if what the file limit is on these these user files, but uh, I mean anyone who's worked with you know, is using them in this way for doing like an import or migration, they could be, could be quite large. Uh -huh. um, and I think when you get to that scale, you probably want to look at um, using like maybe one of those network storage options where you're using like S3 or an Azure bucket or a Google Cloud bucket or something like that um, uh -huh. rather than user file. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. Awesome. So we've got a file up there, which is great. I think at this point, um, I think I want to split this horizontally. I think it's going to make it just a little bit easier. Um, and I think I'm going to re-export this. So I just split my terminal because I think we may want to run some commands uh, kind of locally and some, some up above. Cool. Um, so getting back to here, so we've uploaded, that's great. Um, we can do the cockroach uh, user file list command. And we see output of there, we see that warning. It's a little bit annoying, but it's there. And the cwpgdump.sql. Cool. Um, so we have uh, a file up there, an user file, and now we're ready to migrate. So. What I'm going to do is first uh, connect. Make this guy. You'll know. You'll you'll see in a minute why I divided this. It's going to make our our lives a little bit easier. I can get that to go down. That's all right. Um, so we're connected, and uh, the first thing I don't want to give away some of the excitement, but first thing I'm going to do is do the import. So. Import is basically just a SQL statement. I mean, this is super simple. Um, there are options and flags, but, uh, and there's, like I mentioned, there's lots of formats supported, but in this case, I'll just do import. Let's just do the, the naive version. Let's import this. And you see that triple slash syntax, so we don't have to do that full path, the default DB, user files, all that stuff. I hit that, and there's um, two things I see right away. So one is we get an error. Um, and then we also get a hint. So basically the error is that there's some unsupported syntax and we need to, uh, the hint actually is related. So um, by default, PG dump, we don't support every single statement that occurs in PG dump and we don't wanna just throw away things that we don't understand. So by default, you'll get some error. Um, <clears throat> fortunately, you can, um, do, you can ignore um, unsupported statements uh, with this option. So we import with unsupported statements. And then also I want to log the ignored statements into a user file. And that way I can download that and inspect that and say, well, what didn't go well and kind of get an idea about what the problem was. Um, and maybe it's no problem. Maybe it's just, you know, these various statements that PG creates. So I do that and now I see, shoot, uh, there's another problem. Um, import PG dump does not support user defined types. Please remove all create type statements from the dump file. So, so in my super happy path, when I do a little demo, a lot of times we don't see this type of thing, but I, I wanted to leave this in here because, uh, I wanted to, I don't know. I mean, just kind of show you that it's not always going to go perfect. And anytime that you're going in between databases, um, 
you're going to experience some issues. It's just kind of the way it goes. Um, don't be afraid. Um, yeah, you know, there's going to be a few times that you have to work around. So I just changed directories into the directory with the that dump, and I'm going to do CW. I need to go into migrate existing data. So let's take a look at this. Um, so it said create type statement, and I'm just kind of kind of searching through, and I see there's one create type statement. So because these create type statements are not supported during import, really the solution is quite simple. I'm going to run this, create the type, and then I'm going to comment out the create type. I'm going to save that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete that from the uh, user file, the cluster local storage, and re-upload the one with the commented out type. So we've created the type and um, yeah. And now we are kind of back to where we are. We have a new file. We're going to rerun that. That was that was the critical moment that all my anxiety built up to because <laughs> you run it in who knows what errors you're gonna see, but I've probably run this about ten times and uh, it's, it feels pretty nice. So oh, yeah. So what do we see here? So basically, Cockroach creates a job to import this, and it could if it's a big import, it could take a little while. Um, we see a job ID. We see that the status was succeeded. We see that the fraction completed. Um, that's like, a, I think, a decimal that will go up over time if you're watching a, a big import or a big job. Um, see, there's 1,389 rows. There's a bunch of index entries. And then I mentioned this was, yeah, under a megabyte of data. Um, so it looks like we have some data in here. And make that a little bit bigger. And we can take a look at um, the tables that are in here. So there's a bunch of sequences that were imported along with the tables. So we've got area, area zip code distance, climb 81 station, et cetera. These are all the tables we talked about. And then there's um, a bunch of sequences. So I was thinking we could just look at a couple things. Like, is there really data in there? Um, so this is data for New River Gorge, which is where I used to live. You can see, yes, it looks like there's data in there. Um, let's select star from daily where area ID equals three. It says these are daily forecast data, awesome. And then let's select max area ID from area. 1,150. Um, so it looks good. I mean, it looks like there's some data in here. Um, I'm So I was like curious about these sequences. Um, again, not best practice to use these auto incrementing sequences, but I, in my mind, I'm wondering what, you know, did they actually come through right? Is it going to actually you know, pick up on the next number kind of in the sequence. So I'm just going to do a quick insert on area on the name, uh, latitude and longitude. And it looks like it inserted correctly. And let's just do area ID and uh, name from area where name equals Squamish which is a, I just noticed that that's going off the edge, climbing area in uh, British Columbia, not in the United States, but pretty popular. And I can see, oh yeah, okay, hmm. cool. It looks like the sequence uh, worked fine, which is great. Um, so we've done this, created the type, we've re-uploaded, we've imported that, we've seen some tables. Um, and then I think I think the other thing I was uh, thought might be kind of interesting to look at is I think we can probably exit out of this um, clear and then do 
uh, list. What happened to those um, log files? So I see a couple different log files. Um, I think the first one was when I, uh, the create st type statement didn't work. Um, so I'm not super interested in that one, but I can do cockroach user file get, and then pg dump, that gives me this o.log. And then um, I can look at any, so there were two, there's schema and data. And this one I looked at was unsupported data statements. So this will help me understand anything that happened that wasn't um, supported. So in this case, I see there's, uh, I'm not sure about the first one, but the second one I can see is an alter type that changes the owner. Um, so that's unsupported. So, you know, maybe that's important to me. Maybe that's not. Um, not totally sure um and then but yours is going to be different right yours is going to be you may have there may be some unsupported things in there that you say see that you say hey you know i need to make some change and i think that's important you know when you're doing this it's not always going to be like 100 percent perfect when you do it there's going to be some things that you might need to to fiddle with um and then when I look at the unsupported schema, I can see a bunch of this like set timeout, set lock timeout, um, idle in transaction, et cetera, et cetera. And all of these things are um, kind of Postgres specific. But then I also see a lot of these alter table um, changing the owner uh, that are unsupported in the import. So, so I think it's important that if you are using um, that type of a flag that you are logging it and then you do a kind of an audit of this and see if there's anything in there that's gonna be an issue for you. Cool. Um, well, I, I was gonna mention that, 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 that there's an easier way of doing this. I, um, there is, uh, if you get up to 21.1 and above, there's a cockroach import command, which will do the user file for you. Uh, upload the file and load it directly from a file that's already in your current directory. So you go cockroach import pg dump and the and the file name. Uh, we wouldn't have learned as much. It would have done it all under the covers, um, but it will. Um, yeah. So that's that's a new command yeah. that came out in twenty one point one. Yeah. Cool. Thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, because this is really a convenient way of doing it. Um, and actually, look, uh, we see that um, in the documentation says user must have create privileges on default DB, which is what I granted to the which migration is, user. There's a, mm -hmm. there's a moral in that tale. Check the docs because they are really good and very comprehensive. So, yeah, it's 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 always yeah. good to check, check the docs out. There's plenty of good tips in there. Yeah, so, so this is really, I'm trying to remember why I, I almost use this and then I feel like they're I'm trying to think of what the limitation was, but as you can see here, it imports, uh, it uploads the user file, imports the data, and then deletes the user file with for PG dump and MySQL dump. So definitely recommend checking that out. Um, I think that's potentially a really really good option. Um, and another thing I'd point out there, actually, if you go up the the contrib the contribute button, if you see something in there that doesn't quite work and you have to put a workaround in, you can, second one down, report a doc issue or suggest new content. You can contribute. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, highly recommend that. Um, the other the other resource that uh, I, I keep an eye on, and so, you know, there's lots of folks within Cockroach Labs that, that keep an eye on is the uh, community Slack, mm -hmm. um, which is a good resource. If you are doing a migration and you're having a problem, there's actually, I don't have it linked in this workshop, but there's an open GitHub issue for improving the, uh, in particular, Postgres import. So there are there are some um, issues that you could run into, and uh, we're kind of working through those to try to improve that because we're, you know, this is an example of where we're trying to make this you know a few less steps and a little more seamless um, and i think a lot a lot of uh, those statements would do do work as you proved you cut and pasted them out of the pg dump file and they do work so maybe i think we should be updating yeah. that and making them work as part of a pg dump because the statements work exactly yeah yeah, yeah no totally agree totally agree it's interesting the uh i don't know all the under what's going on under the hood with these 
these dump files, but um, rather I know rather than uh, pulling them, like executing the statements, they're they're taking those statements and converting them into um, kind of an underlying like data load and changes. So, um, but it sure would be nice, like if that's the case, it would be nice if we like that create type, if it just outputted that to a file, even if the import statement didn't support it and I could just say, oh, okay, you know, run this and, you know, all at once and fix all my problems or something like that. Um, so. Well, you, you're lucky that with a PG dump, I'm the same with the MySQL dump, they are just SQL statements. So it's easy to kind of edit the yeah. file, comment them out. They're not a binary format or anything like that. So. Yeah, I mean, migration is, it can be tricky. Um, and there's so many different permutations of, of data and dumps and things that are being done. So um, I think it's, it's don't, don't be put off if, if you run into a couple issues, like reach out for some help from us, just kind of dig into them a little bit, look at them, because um, there, there are a lot of workarounds if you are having a problem. And we just really want folks to get, be able to get their existing data into Cockroach DB serverless and give it a try, because it's, it's, an, it's an awesome product. Oops, I just uh, started marketing again. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> John, amazing presentation. Thank you for Thanks. sharing that. Uh, for yeah. all of our viewers, if you have any questions, you can go to forum.cockroachlabs.com and post them there. If you have any cool. questions for Alistair or John, post them now. I do want to remind you that if you're watching somewhere else other than YouTube, be sure to go subscribe to us on YouTube. YouTube's the only place where all the videos are saved. So you can always find a recording there at youtube.com slash cockroach DB. Yeah, and, and one last thing. Um, I know as we, we uh, want, you know, wind things down is that um, I, I showed you just kind of an intro, right? Like there's, there's a lot more. I recommend going, taking a look at the uh, documentation. There's a best practices doc that will help you in things like splitting up your schema from your data, using formats like CSV or other formats that actually perform a little bit better than just the straight native dumps. Um, so yeah, this is, this is an intro. This is an intro class. There's a lot more to learn and um, appreciate everyone showing up who joined the, the stream. Yeah, definitely. And tomorrow at the same time, on whatever channel you are watching on, we will have office hours where you can ask us anything. Our two guests tomorrow will be two enterprise architect experts, Bram and Fabio. They've done some workshops in the past. They're amazing. So I just wanted to say thank you again to everyone who joined us, John and Alistair, and we will see you tomorrow. Cool.